Hi there, Havering. I'm standing here in front of a big empty space. Last week, our councillors met to decide whether we should turn this space into... This! A beautiful residential care home for the elderly. This comes complete with a hairdresser's and therapy room, dining rooms, lounges, a cinema, and a roof garden. Wow, and how many elderly people will benefit from that? 40. Wow, that's great. Not least because Havering has the largest elderly population in London. Can you believe that? As the Greater London Authority website states, the percentage of people aged 65 or over is highest in Havering with 16.4%. Though even these figures are not as high as the England average of 16.5%. This is really something to celebrate. Think of all those older generations alive today, passing on their knowledge, skills and wisdom to the younger generation. This is how society should be. And I believe a good society is defined by how well it treats its elderly. So with that in mind, let's examine how we treat our elderly here in Havering. At the Regulatory Services Planning Committee, Linda Vanden Hendy, Upminster Councillor for the Residents Association, Havering's main opposition group in the council, put the case forward for a new care home. It will enhance the street scene and will provide an attractive flow for the whole that is there. It's a care home and it will provide jobs in the area. Brilliant! Sadly, this care home proposal was voted out. There's now not going to be a care home and for the foreseeable future, this site will remain a big empty space. Conservative councillor Stephen Kelly of Emerson Park just told us why he rejected the plans. If they weren't so greedy and maybe made it a bit smaller, it would be a good development. But as it stands, it is unacceptable. But there are no reasons this application should be rejected. I'm supporting the application because it's a big vacant site. Rebukes councillor Vanden Hendy. By the way, an interesting use of the word greedy to describe space for the elderly, but anyway, Councillor Ron Oa, another Upminster councillor for the Residents Association, put forward a suggestion we, may, we build a smaller care home on this site. And although we might apply for planning permission to make it bigger at a later date, at least we'll still have a care home. I think we can give planning permission and just add on conditions to it, but I don't think it's something we should refuse. So did our local government accept this compromising watered-down position? No, of course they didn't. Now there's going to be no big care home, no small care home, nothing. Just a big empty space. And yet Havering's elderly population continues to grow and continues to require more quality long-term adult social care. And in fact, Councillor Oa sums it up pretty well. Our population is growing older. We need this sort of facility in the area. By next decade, the number of elderly people in our borough is ex expected to increase at a dramatically higher rate than anywhere in London and also in many parts of the UK. Thanks to medical advances, people are living longer, which is a good thing. And also fewer children are being born, which is leading us to a situation where eventually there'll be more elderly people than young people. If you're wondering why this is happening, here's a history lesson. Come on, history, fun! Once upon a time, European empires ruled large swathes of the planet. This required a young workforce to expand their territories and make the economy strong. At the same time, most ordinary people didn't grow old because of diseases and terrible working conditions. Today, those countries which were once colonized and ruled by the West are now becoming big themselves. Brazil, Russia, India and China, or the BRIC countries, are expanding their influence. And in order for them to be able to do this, they have to have a younger workforce. At the same time, Europe, including the UK and including Havering, isn't producing children at the same rate. So to summarise, while in the past the West was young and the rest, Brazil, Russia, India and China, were old, today it's the other way around. The West is old and the rest is young. So it should all be simple, right? We put more money into looking after our elderly in this changing global political climate. Oh, wait, but there's one other factor I didn't mention. Cut! Since Labour bankrupted us four years ago, the Conservatives and Liberal Democrats have decided to screw us even more Ooh. by cutting spending to councils. 
This has had an impact on what the Conservative Havering government can afford to do. And clearly, a new care home for the elderly isn't their priority. And the issue of funding on a national level, well, <laughs> we'll have to wait till the next general election in 2014 for them to decide whether they spend the money on elderly social care Aww. or tax breaks for millionaires. Mm. I was with my gran when she died earlier this year, and I miss her every day. I've experienced firsthand the issues that care homes go through. The care staff at my grand's were absolutely amazing, but they were short-staffed and their wages were pittance. When I'm old, I want to live in a country and a borough which prioritises elderly social care, both for the elderly and the people who look after them. If we don't start now, what example are we setting to our young? If we don't look after our elderly, how do you think our children and our grandchildren are going to look after us when we're old and grey? We need to make a decision now, Havering, about what kind of society we want to live in. Do you want to live in a world where we prioritise elderly social care, where we look after our elderly? Or do you want to live in a world as we have now, where we have a big empty space? Until next time, Havering.